Hey everyone, there's going to be another breakdown. Uh, we have the 2023 ADCC trials, East Coast trials. Uh, this is going to be um, Jacob Couch, Elder Cruz. I haven't watched this. I haven't watched any of the, the matches uh, from this ADCC trials, but I heard they're, they're really good. So I want to start with this one. Uh, before we get started, though, check out the link in the description where you can join the Sweet Sides of Fighting Underground and uh, gain access to all the strength conditioning programs and can also submit your own videos for footage uh, to be reviewed and broken down. So uh, let's get started on this. Um, be really interesting to see uh, how much wrestling is done here. Just because I know Jacob does a lot of guard playing. Okay, so right, we're already down. Okay, so we're down on the ground. It was a bit of a single pick, uh, but you know, I, you know, Cash didn't really defend it. Uh, that he was kind of he was happy to sit to guard here. Gives you some hand fighting. Be careful backing up that much. Okay, so just something I want to point out. When I mean, you're watching a lot of these advanced matches now. The reason why you don't see a lot of times, sometimes you don't see just somebody just driving in to the guard here is they're waiting for the right time to drive in, right? They're looking for the right angle and opportunity. And those are very uh, tiny opportunities, right? There's not these big opportunities to just pass somebody's guard. As a general rule, I would say that you want to keep your feet away from the person when you're trying to pass. Um, you don't want to just start sticking your legs in places because there's all kinds of different guards now. That they that you know high level guys can use to actually start to entangle uh, get you entangled. So um, if the longer you can deny some sort of connection with your legs, um, the 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 more the person on bottom has to kind of chase and um, uh, try to establish some form of connection with their hooks with their legs. Um, and this this kind of puts them on a little bit of a bit of a chasing. You know, there's a bit they can't just kind of hang out back, especially if you're still pressuring forward while keeping your legs back. So that we may see some of this here. I'm already, I'm already watching some of this happen now. And it certainly is across the board. I, I see this doing a lot of uh, the breakdowns. I, I see this quite often. So we should uh, just see, see how he's like, he's just denying the, the connection with the, with the legs here. And he has connection with his, you know, Elder has connection with his hands here to the upper body, but he doesn't want to step in with the legs yet just because he, do, he doesn't want to get him entangled. He's still pressuring forward, though. You see how he's trying to get his hands, he's trying to get to inside positions here to pin on the hips, pin on the knees, to try to get the, his legs to step around here. You see, Couch trying to get a hook there, and now we've got a connection with the shoulder, getting at the knee here to try to push out of the way. Okay, so Couch had to try to get the connection with the arms to pull him in so that he can get to some sort of guard established. The power of butt scooting here. Still can't get quite any any connection. Okay, so now we have a connection. So we got into connection with a bit of a Z guard position here. This forces Elder forward to start to play in this in this guard. So right off the bat, there's going to be a lot of hand fighting here. Once you get into a Z guard uh, type type of half guard here, there's going to be a lot of hand fighting. Um, this is a very common position now we're, we're starting to see more often. And there's always a two-on-ones here, right? You see two-on-ones ones, uh, with this arm. You also see a two-on-ones on the other arm as well. This is usually for pulling and arm drags and Russian ties and things like this to tie your opponent up with the upper body to produce sweeps and attacks. And as long as you know, uh, this, is the, this is the dilemma, right? I mean, the upper body can be attacked here. Because, you know, uh, Cruz is, is pressuring in, which, as he should be, you know, this, it's not wrong by any means. Um, this denying the leg access. But as soon as he postures back, if there's some sort of like uh, arm attacks or some sort of entanglement that he doesn't like, he's going to have to posture up or post out. This leaves his legs vulnerable. And this is kind of the game that, that's being played. So you got the two on one, so there's a fight here. Try to get to the inside. If, if uh, Couch can get the two, the two arms and get him pulled up, he can actually probably gain access to the leg here. See how he's reaching for the leg? And he's using that right arm as a good frame on the neck here, right? He's lifting that neck and getting that head up. Now we're in a regular half. He's scooping for the underhook here.
be careful with this narrow base here. I, I do know. I, I I do understand what's happening here. There's there's a, there's a strategy here. You know, pinching the knees here to start to get a to turn the corner. Again, this 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 two on one grip here, very strong. This causes a, the person to get uh, elongated, right? You, you don't want to get overextended here. You know, Cruz doesn't want to get overextended in this position to where he gets too far away from his knees. Threat to go over top for a Kimura type position. And this frame here on the neck, it's, it's very uncomfortable, right? And it, it makes it to where, you know, you can't, and, and the elbow is up here. You know, Cash's right elbow is up. It, it's, just, it's just can't, you can't really drive past this, right? The top arm and the top leg are always going to be your best frames and reset reset uh, options, you know, with your top leg and, your, and the top arm. They're always going to be uh, the things that the person has to get around, for the most part, to actually pass the guard. You see how he lifted his head up and then he immediately put, put himself back down because as soon as he postures up, Kachin can drive in and go forward. Again, trying to go for the hands and trying to grab the leg here. And the reason why Kach is comfortable here trying to still reach for the leg is because of this frame. He can start to lift that frame and get, uh, if he can get Cruz up, then he can get access to the leg. So again, two hands on the throat there. That's been a very common thing that people are doing now. And, and it's effective. You know, they frame out on the, on the neck. They kind of do this little thing on the neck. And this just, you know, it's, it's a same thing as the, what the person on bot is doing. It's a frame. It's a post to keep them from coming underneath you and getting to your legs. So this is going to be a battle for a while because both guys know exactly what, what, what's going on and what needs to happen. Again, Cruz is doing a good job. He's staying really low, you know, getting low to the mat here, still trying to keep but keeping that pressure in. It's very going to be very difficult. If he retracts here, he's going to be exposed for legs. Body lock action. So now you're looking at the arm drag position. So the arm drag is going to get to the hand is to the chest. The left hand is controlling the hand. The right hand is scooping under. So he can actually start to produce a, a bit of an off balancing here. So he's uh, couch just starting to sit up. And now this forces uh, Cruz to kind of retract here. The hand fighting right here, the reason why you see so much hand fighting on this is so critical is because it's really, if, if it's, it's, it's who's going to be able to get, if Cruz can deny Crouch the, couch the access to his leg, um, then he can start to technically start to produce an attack. But Cruz is not, not deviating from this. He's harassing this arm right here, producing arm drags, getting two-on-ones so that he can get access to the leg. Okay, so you can see he's starting to get a scoop under the leg here. Again, Cruz does a good job. He just keeps that pressure in, denying, getting the hands on the neck, the mouth, framing out. Again, this when you got when when Cruz starts to get overextended here, he kind of has to frame on the neck. He has to frame on the mouth. If he gets too overextended, then he's gonna get swept. And what this does is it pushes couch away, right? It pushes him away to extend couch as well. So they're both getting extended here, but it's okay because then it's, it's it's somewhat nullified. Again, there's this bit of a sprawl and a hip switch here. Try to get to, to free the knee and to get a little more, turn the corner. And we still have a two-on-one being threatened here. There's the hip drop. Try to loosen that left knee, that left knee out. Cruises left knee to try to get out. Post it up. And Cruz just keeps that pressure in. Sprawling, trying to free the knee there. But now he's in full guard. Uh-oh. So now we're in a full guard position. This is the, one of the problems when you start to, you know, switch your hips and drop your hips low like that and, and try to turn the corner. You can actually end up uh, getting into this full guard position. Got two and one. Now going into Russian tie. 
Put your hands in the armpit. We'll see if Cruz actually decides to stand up here to open the guard. A lot of harassing the arms here, though. Kasha doing a really good job of just continuous uh, attacking from the guard here. Okay, so now we're up. So you see uh, Couch is actually getting underhook here. You see a K-guard position. There's K-guard. So now the knee drops down. Anytime you see this, somebody stands up to open the guard. This is a very common counter to this uh, because everybody stands up to break the guard now because it is one of the most effective ways to open the closed guard. Um, the guard, the person on uh, with the full guard can easily fall into a, uh, a K guard position. And this is actually good because you can start to actually go into leg entanglements. And you have a lot of upper body attacks as well. So there's the turn. The top leg got uh, the top leg through the top leg over. And now he's getting into a, a K guard leg entanglement. And so now that they have extension, so now you can see Cruz is not doing well now because he's, he's, his leg is he's getting pulled away from his leg. So the leg is getting, the knees up on getting to the chest of couch. He's got a uh, double under here, or I'm sorry, uh, Gable, uh, Gable or butterfly grip around the leg, underhook, and he's getting away from his leg. So this leg is starting to get extended. And you can see couch already has his leg thrown over top. So now this, the butt has, sit, he's sitting his butt to the ground. So this is really bad because now that the butt is on the ground, he has no recourse here. So he's going to have to try to drive back forward, try to start, start hand fighting. He can do a counterattack, which is great. This, now he's opting to go to this, uh, it appears to be a counterattack so far. You need to be careful here because this looks like an uh, outside heel hook. Oh, he got it. So that looked like a double outside Ashi. That's <laughs> funny pause there. Um, let me see when he gets up here. So it appears to be, it looked like a double outside Ashi. I couldn't see where his feet were placed. Uh, it could be, he may have had his feet posted on the hips. This is a more popular uh, thing to do now is when you're double outside Ashi, actually put the feet on the person when you're doing these ankle locks, to specifically ankle lock positions. But this appeared to be a heel hook, uh, uh, an outside heel hook. Could have been an ankle lock, you know, a hiding the heel kind of ankle lock, uh, just because I can see from the backside. But it appears to be, possibly an outside heel hook because I didn't see the heel. So either it's an ankle lock uh, with, the, with the heel hidden, uh, which is another form of, of an ankle lock, or it's the um, uh, an outside heel hook. Either way, it's, it, it was a leg submission. And it was pretty quick too. I mean, it was uh, what, four minutes. So. Good. All right, so that was impressive. So shows the power of uh, just the K guard, K guard, uh, the guard itself. Um, I learned K guard, you know, back when Lachlan was doing it in ADCC when they first uh, started playing around with it. Maybe a little bit before then, because I saw it kind of being played with. It's around the time I started playing with K guard. Um, it is an excellent guard to play with. You hadn't seen it much uh, as of recently, um, outside of Lachlan and a few other guys. Um, but it is a extremely powerful position, a powerful guard. Um, I still teach it uh, at Val, so um, I actually just teach it, taught it recently. Uh, but it is an extremely effective guard, ex especially for leg attacks. So specifically for leg attacks, uh, this is a great guard to learn. It's, and if you're going to be playing a lot of nogi, uh, in my opinion, this is one of the guards um, that you actually really need to study and get, and get good at because it is it's extremely dynamic, uh, and you can do it from all times, types of different positions. And it, it goes with other guards very well. Um, it's technically in a closed off type of position, like closed guard or legs around the person. You're not really playing an inside position, which is really interesting because most guards are playing an inside position, and this plays more of the outside position. Uh, so it's a it's a very it's a very very useful guard, um, as we can see. It goes very well with uh, leg locks, uh, and a good if you want to see a, you know one of the best at it. You can watch Lachlan and his ADCC when he was getting into backside 50-50 and tapping everybody out because it was people, a lot of people didn't really understand it. Uh, but now that we have been playing with it for many, you know, many years now, um, and, you know, things come in waves. So we're going to see, probably start seeing a lot more K guard, you know, being played and then until people start to figure out and things start to evolve from there. So um, very good. It was a very good, uh, very quick uh, and a good example of how to play a, a you know, good half guard, Z guard and, um, and to really set those positions up. 
Uh, the, the one thing, I'll, last thing I'll say is just the key point I think to take away from this is when somebody starts to stand to open your guard, which is what most people do now, the K guard is always there. There's a seated K guard uh, strategy, and then there's also a standing K guard strategy. Um, and then we just saw that played out here. So really good job. Uh, you know, congratulations uh, to Couch. And um, we'll, we'll do another match uh, uh, breakdown here pretty soon. All right. All right, thanks.